Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. I've got a channel announcement to make which I'll share with you guys in a few minutes time from now. Something I'm incredibly excited about. Now to share this news with you guys, I thought I would travel to my favorite UK destination for landscape photography ever. But I've got to tell you, getting here has been no easy feat. Hello again. The cold weather's going to continue as we go through much of this week, and with that, many of us will see quite a bit of snow. This is getting pretty serious now. We're in the middle of nowhere. The snow is starting to come down. It's minus 10. Just for the record, Gaz is driving a 4x4 and his vehicle is fitted out with winter tyres. And I'm driving a Vauxhall Vivaro that identifies as a sledge at the mere hint of snow. <laughs> this is getting really, really precarious. Okay, so a further update. The snow is coming down very heavily. I have no idea how the van is still going. The road is fully covered, as you can see. And I said earlier that the journey was getting a bit precarious. It is really scary now, really scary. But we're still plodding on. We've got about 20 minutes before we get to our destination. I'm determined to get there, determined. Now, I'm honestly not gonna say this for a fact, but according to the sat-nav, I've got 15 minutes to get to where we want to go. And the van is sliding all over the place. I'm in fourth gear. If I put my foot down in fourth gear, the wheels will just spin. It is really, really scary. Really scary. And we've been driving for over an hour and we haven't seen one other vehicle on the road. It was always gonna happen. Literally seven minutes away from where we're stopping tonight. Deer run onto the road, slammed on the brakes, anti-lock brakes kicked in. And I had a choice, either plow into the deer or plow into the banking. Hmm, what did I say? Slammed on the brakes, what were we doing guys? Not even 20 miles an hour down here? An hour. Jesus, so now, We've got to try and get my van out of the ditch. Let's see. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> We've got her out. <laughs> Look at that, seriously. Oh, that was really scary. Guys, man, I can't thank you enough. <laughs> Your vehicle rocks, man, I'll tell you what. It really does. And we're literally seven minutes away. Right, let's crack on. <laughs> <laughs> We've just made it. Look at that dump of snow. Wow. So lucky, so lucky with our timing, so lucky. So look, it's midnight here, and apart from what I've seen under the headlights of the van, I, I can't even begin to imagine what it's going to look like tomorrow morning after an even bigger dump of snow. You've no idea how excited I am. It's taken me over 10 hours to get to where I am now, and I'm likely to be blocked in here for maybe a couple of days or so because we are in the middle of nowhere. It is a location I will, of course, share with you guys in this video. So all I now need to do is get my head down, get a few hours sleep and wake up tomorrow morning and peep out of the van window. And then, fingers crossed, go and take some of the best landscape pictures that I have ever taken. Morning campers, this is the view out of my van window. The first light this morning.
That is stunning. So the snow is still on and off and it's going to be on and off for at least another hour. But what you can't see in the background, uh, these incredible mountains that are obviously snow capped now. So what I'm going to do is take a couple of shots, but the likelihood is I'll be back out in about an hour or so's time. Hopefully when all this is cleared to show off those lovely mountain ranges in the background. But in a nutshell, I'll take a shot like that and I shall zoom in and grab an image just like that. That's just awesome. And then of course, I'll wander around and look for other points of interest. I'll get close, I'll get down to the water's edge as well. And every now and again, there's a, a, only a slight breeze, but that slight breeze just abates and then we end up with a gorgeous reflection. You can see at the moment, the reflection isn't quite there. But when that breeze abates, it's mirror-like. What an incredible morning. The only filter I'm applying, or the only filter I think I need to apply today is a polarizer, and that's just to take a slight bit of glare off the surface of the water just to show off the reflection of the mountains when they eventually do come in the background. There's a tree just up to my right hand side, a windswept tree that looks pretty damn sweet. I'm going to use that as foreground interest tooting out at the Bothy and across the loch as well. The problem you have is when you move slightly further to the right of the Bothy from this angle, then you can see that the Bothy has windows and doors that are boarded up and they don't quite look as good. Loving that. That is so nice. Look at that. Just utilizing some of this grass here. It's foreground interest. As if you need any form of foreground interest, but that is beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm going to go a bit closer to the bothy as well and grab a couple of shots and also get my camera down even lower. It's so still. <laughs> So the snow's coming down fairly heavy and I was gonna wait until the snow stops before I bother coming back out. But I just think with this heavy snowfall, they just make for interesting pictures. So I can't wait. That's the bottom line. <laughs> I can't wait. I just think a composition like that, with that glowing roof, oh, it's just simple, but effective. That is so nice, so nice. And then what I'm gonna do is armed with my 70 to 200 mil lens, I'm gonna wander further back, zoom in, compress the background, but what I want to try and do is to try and get the bothy in. So the lit bothy, the bright bothy with the white snow all on the rooftops. I want to try and contrast that against the dark water. And I'm gonna do that by walking in that direction. This is nice, this is really nice. And as you could see, the chimney tops 
uh, overlapping the land in the background, but quite considerably so it doesn't look like a mistake. Loving all of these grasses just peeping through the snow here. Leading line, foreground interest up to the bothy there. I might drop it down to something like that. Now, this is a particular shot that I wanted to grab when the snow had stopped and the mountains look quite nice in the background. But as it stands at the moment, because there isn't a background, I think the bothy stands out even more. Oh, and it looks to be getting quite bright. So what I'm going to do is grab a shot from here and possibly lower the camera down as well, just to exaggerate some of these grasses. <laughs> Woo, I'm up against it. Oh, this is why I'm here. This is just awesome. Now I've got a question mark. It's snowing, snowing heavy. My current shutter speed is a 30th of a second. So I don't know whether to apply a six stop filter, slow my shutter speed right down so that you won't see the snowdrops or, or is it the snowdrops that make it? When I can't make my mind up, there's only one solution. I has to do both. I need to throw you guys in camera because I am very excited about something. Very excited. Take a look up at these trees. I've put my 70 to 200 mil lens on something like that there. If that's in focus, look how incredible that is for just something that's very unusual. That is just a print I can see it so if I zoom out a bit to maybe include some more or maybe go a little bit closer that tree there is just standout-ish to me so a couple of things I could do here no no I like it just like that that oh. the white contrasting against the bark the dark bark of the trees is oh as you could probably tell, I got quite excited here. And it's fair to say, I loved the pictures I captured too. Before I show you the images, here's that channel announcement. Now, regular viewers of the channel will already know that I've been using the Nikon Z8 for the past maybe four or five months now. Nikon graciously offered to lend me a camera and various lenses quite some time ago, just to use for a couple of weeks or so. I find myself some three months later still using the gear. Well, I'm pleased to say that even though Nikon offered to lend me the gear with no commitments back from myself at all, they've liked the images and the videos that I've produced on my channel whilst using their gear. So now I'm proud to announce that I'm now working in partnership with Nikon. I've just signed a two year deal where I can best describe it as Nikon are now sponsoring my channel. And before anyone asks, no, this does not mean that I am now a Nikon ambassador. It merely means that I'm working in partnership with Nikon. The prestigious title of Nikon ambassador quite rightly belongs to more deserved photographers and quite rightly so as well. So 
Moving forward, like I say, I'm now going to be working in association with Nikon. And I've got to tell you, when they first approached me, there was no happier person on this planet. I'm 63 years of age and a company like Nikon approached me to be a partner. You've no idea how happy that makes me feel. Apart from the telegraph pole that I'm obviously going to have to remove in post-production, it looks pretty sweet. I've opted against trying to include the bothy here because the bothy just doesn't look very nice at all. But in terms of a wind-swept snowy tree and a background to die for, I'm going to look at grabbing a picture something like that. Right, there are a set of trees that I really like. In particular, these trees here. I'm really struggling to place them in the background because ideally I want to get more height so that we've got no overlapping going on there. Maybe zoom in and isolate them individually. Let me see. I can just show you what I mean. Maybe something like that would work. Ah, oh, I'm not sure. I'm not keen on the overlapping. Well, it's not so bad at the moment because the trees will stand out against the background because there's nothing going on in the background. But 